Okay. So we're, um, we're going deep on this Trump 2024 thing. And honestly, some of this stuff has been kind of weird, right? Like he's going all in on these huge rallies, mm -hmm. but not in the swing states you'd expect. California, New York. It's like he's trying to win over folks who already have their minds made up. It's definitely, um, it's definitely a head scratcher at first glance, you know, ah. like why spend all that time and money in places where you're practically guaranteed to lose? <laughs> exactly. So we dug into some articles to figure out what's going on. What's the strategy here? Yeah. So it seems like it's less about flipping the states themselves and more about like, you know, using them for other purposes. Like, remember all those times Trump said California is only unwinnable because of like irregularities and stuff? Oh, yeah, totally. It's like this whole thing feeds into that narrative he's been pushing. Right. And these rallies, even in places where he's unlikely to win, they kind of become part of that narrative. It's a way to keep those claims, you know, front and center, fueling that distrust even before a single vote is cast. It's all about controlling the narrative, huh? And you got to admit, those rallies are made for headlines. For sure. He's a master of spectacle. Nobody can deny that. Yeah. But there's this whole other layer to it, too. This whole too big to rig thing. Oh, yeah. What's that about? It's like he's suggesting the crowds are so massive, there's no way he could lose legitimately. And that's what makes it kind of scary, right? He's basically preemptively challenging the election. Like, if he doesn't win by a landslide, especially in these supposedly unwinnable states, hmm. well, it's easy to spin that as proof that something shady went down. So it's about energizing his base, but also kind of setting the stage for questioning the results later on. Yeah, and that's why it's important to remember this isn't exactly a new tactic, you know? Election denialism has been around for a while, but it's definitely gained traction recently. And when leaders start making these kinds of claims, it erodes trust in the system, makes it harder to even talk about the issues that actually matter. Which is what elections should be about, right? Like, are we even focusing on the right things anymore? It's easy to get caught up in the horse race aspect of it all, but we got to remember what's really at stake. The economy, healthcare, climate change, all that stuff that directly affects people's lives. So how do we keep our eyes on the ball? It feels like we're drowning in information these days. You got to be proactive. Yeah. Don't just passively scroll through whatever pops up on your feed. Look for diverse sources of information. Talk to people who see things differently than you do. Hold our leaders accountable for their stances on the issues that matter to us. So it's not enough to just show up at a rally or share a post on social media. Mm -hmm. We need to be informed, engaged citizens at once. hundred percent. Democracy takes work. It's not a spectator sport. It starts with being critical about the information we consume. Don't just take things at face value. Question your assumptions. Look for evidence. Well, speaking of evidence, the articles also talk about how Trump's using online platforms like YouTube and podcasts to reach voters directly. Oh, yeah, that's a whole other can of worms. It's fascinating how political campaigns are evolving. They're using all these new tools to connect with voters. So it's not just about rallies and town halls anymore. It's about meeting voters where they are, which increasingly is online. But we'll circle back to that in a bit. For now, let's stick with these rallies. One article mentioned how people in Coachella reacted to Trump's visit, and it sounds like it didn't go over so well. Yeah, not exactly a warm welcome. The mayor was pretty outspoken about his opposition to Trump's policies and rhetoric. Yeah, Mayor Hernandez called it like a slap in the face to the community. <laughs> and, you know, he brought up Trump's immigration policies, his rhetoric toward minorities, all that stuff. Right. So it's like a gamble, trying to fire up your base without alienating potential swing voters in the process. But even if these rallies don't win him any votes in those states, the articles made it clear they're still incredibly valuable for fundraising. Oh, absolutely. California and New York might be mostly Democrats, but there are still plenty of Republicans there, and those are potential donors. Right. The articles mentioned how the Trump campaign seen a huge spike in donations after each rally, even bigger than what they were getting in those traditional red states. So even if California and New York are long shots, the rallies could still have a major impact on his campaign funds. Exactly. And that money can then go towards funding campaigns in states that are actually in play. It reminds us that we can't just focus on the electoral map. we got to follow the money, too. It's like every move has these ripple effects across the whole board. That's a good way to put it. And speaking of strategy, let's get back to something we touched on earlier. This whole thing with Trump using YouTube and podcasts. Oh, yeah. It's like he's trying to bypass the traditional media and go straight to the voters. And it's not just him. The articles even mention how Kamala Harris's campaign is doing something similar, targeting specific groups through podcasts and online interviews. So this is becoming like the new normal in politics. Mm. But what does it mean for the average voter? It feels like it's getting harder and harder to cut through all the noise and figure out what's real. 
It's true, we're living in the age of information overload, but that's exactly why it's more important than ever to be careful about the information we consume. We can't just believe something because we saw it on social media or heard it on our favorite podcast. So how do we do that? How do we become more discerning, especially during an election season when it seems like everyone has an agenda? Well, for starters, you gotta be aware of your own biases. Like what are your preconceived ideas about the candidates and the issues? Once you know what those biases are, you can start to challenge them by looking for different perspectives. Don't just stay in your own little bubble. So read articles from sources you don't normally agree with, listen to podcasts that challenge your views, things like that. Exactly. It's like exercising a muscle. The more you use your critical thinking skills, the stronger they get. And it's not just about taking in information. It's about actively engaging with it. What do you mean by that? Ask yourself questions like, where's this information coming from? Is it a credible source? What are the potential biases of the author or the publication? Are there other points of view that aren't being represented? So it's like we have to become our own fact checkers and media critics. In a way, yeah. And that doesn't mean you have to be an expert on everything. But having a healthy sense of skepticism and being willing to question what you read and hear, that's crucial in today's media environment. So we've talked about the rallies, the fundraising, mm -hmm. the online strategies. What's the bottom line here? What should we be paying attention to as we get closer to the election? It really comes down to this, this election. It's not just about the candidates, not even just the issues. You know, it's about how we're taking in all this information, forming our opinions and what our role is in all this, this whole democracy thing. Yeah, it's like the rules of the game are changing right in front of us, how campaigns are run, how information spreads. But we can't forget about the actual issues at hand, right? With all this other stuff flying around, how do we keep our focus on what matters? It's tough, no doubt about it, but you gotta be deliberate, you know? Don't let the spectacle distract you from the substance. Like when you're reading an article or watching the news, take a second, ask yourself, what are the real issues here? How do they connect to my life, to the people around me? So it's about looking beyond the horse race, the polls, the who said what. It's about really understanding where the candidates stand on the things that matter most. Exactly. And don't just take their word for it, right? Look at their voting history. What have they actually done? See what experts and people on the ground are saying. The more you know, the better you can see through the BS and make decisions based on facts, not just your gut. It's like we have to step up and be more than just voters. We have to be informed citizens, engaged citizens, if we want to have a say in our country's future. You got it. And that means holding our leaders accountable, not just when it's election time, but all year round. Write to your representatives, go to those town hall meetings, make your voice heard. Democracy only works if we're actually participating, you know? Powerful stuff. We can't just sit back and hope for the best. We have a responsibility to be informed, to be engaged, and to hold our leaders' feet to the fire. Couldn't agree more. And hey, you never know, right? If enough of us start demanding better, asking the tough questions, maybe, just maybe, we can change the way the whole game is played. Now that's something to think about. Well, I think we've given everyone a lot to chew on today. We dug into Trump's strategy with these rallies, talked about how the media landscape is shifting, and most importantly, reminded ourselves about what it means to be citizens in a democracy. It's been a wild ride, that's for sure. So as we head into these last few weeks before the election, Let's all try to stay curious, stay critical, and most importantly, stay engaged. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> Until next time, everybody. <laughs>